What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. Riot's newest champion Kane was released on patch 7.14 and has been in development since August 2016, after Riot had decided to create a new aggressive melee jungler type champion. There are quite a few well-known junglers of this style, Kha'Zix and Jarvan for example, but it had been quite a long time since Riot had created one. Instead, they had been opting for other jungle niches like Kindred, the Marksman jungle, and Ivern, the support style jungler. And so today, I wanted to take a look back before Kane's release to see his development cycle and find out what Kane could have been. Now, starting with the development cycle and choosing the idea for the champion, Narrowing down the ideal character was actually a relatively painless process for Kane. The design team looked at the archetypes of characters that had been recently released or perhaps were in the pipeline, and they found that a lot of the releases that were being developed or had been currently released were non-humanoids. You got Ivern, Kled, Aurelian Soul, which pushed them towards releasing some type of humanoid champion, whether that would be pure human or perhaps what they called human plus, which is essentially just a twist on the humanoid archetype. One of the best examples of maybe a human plus is Varus, who's a human that's corrupted by the Darken, and this led Riot Scruffy to pitch a Darken transformation as being a key component of his gameplay. And this idea apparently went down really well with the design team, likely because there's been a lot of questions about a new transforming style champion from the community, something they were very excited for. And so the development for Kane, or actually Nemesis, which is the name that he was known at the time, began. The original direction for Nemesis was him to be in a conflict against Zaya and Rakan, but this put his internal conflict with the Darken on kind of the backstage, and after much debate, Riot decided that his internal conflict was something that would be much more interesting, especially considering how key it would be to his gameplay. So the link with Zaya and Rakan was dropped from his process. Riot tried a few different personalities with Nemesis, such as having him be more of the calm and confident type, but eventually moved towards a more confident if not arrogant version because it better suited the conflict that was going on inside of him. The problem with having a stoic character is that they're always kind of trying to stay really focused and super serious, which was kind of the case with Kane, whose early voice lines were all about maintaining composure. Since he had this turmoil going on inside of him, it made much more sense to have him be more of like a prodigy that's really cocky about his own abilities. After all, a calm character would probably never really want to pick up a scythe, knowing that it has such a powerful and dangerous being inside of it. It made the conflict between Kane and Rast much more interesting too. An arrogant, cocky character like Kane is much more likely to clash with the Darken's corruption. And since Riot are pretty serious about making sure gameplay and character themes line up in their newer releases, Kane needed his kit to fit two particular criteria. He had to have elements of his kit tied to his background as a member of the Order of Shadows, as well as something to represent the Darken corruption. One of the first glimpses of Kane's early kit was shared by Daniel Z. Klein, the lead developer on Kane, and it shows that the scythe weapon was picked up pretty early on considering this kit from November 8th last year. This became the third piece of the puzzle since Kane's abilities would need to emulate the sweeping AoE devastation that a scythe should bring to the battlefield. This early kit also used Q as his main damage tool, featuring Kane using his scythe to slice up enemies in an area around him. And his W on this build is actually quite similar to his current ultimate today. You would jump in an enemy direction and become untargetable for a few seconds before leaving in your chosen direction, which would then go on to replace the earlier versions of his ultimate, which gave the players a choice. Embrace the darkened aspect of Kane and give yourself some pretty big buffs for melee combat, or stick with Kane's traditional assassin background and use an assassin's mark that would let you blink back to an enemy to deal damage. This would likely have made Kane play a lot more similarly to Zed, although without as much mind game potential. Nemesis's W was replaced by a line skill shot that works in a similar way to Aatrox's skill shot actually, likely to showcase a little bit of the Darken that is corrupting him. This was a good way to ensure that he would have all the important boxes ticked on his kit. He'd have a good balance between Darken, Shadow Assassin, and Scythe abilities. The only ability that didn't really change much from this early iteration of the kit is Shadow Step, or Swiggity Swooty as it was referred to during development. Interestingly enough, this ability was actually originally created for Ao Shin, 
and may have never happened if it weren't for a bit of ingenuity on the part of Fan Fang, the writer responsible for Aoshin's development back in 2013. The story goes that Fan Fang had been coming up with crazy ideas for his dragon champion, before one day deciding that dragons should be able to fly. He named the ability True Flight, which would allow Aoshin to soar above terrain. Daniel Klein talked about how confused he was that Fan Fang managed to make it work before discovering Fan Fang's solution by looking up the code for True Flight. Making terrain not behave like terrain is actually quite a challenging task when it comes to coding, it turns out, but Fan Fang actually came up with quite an elegant solution. Take every movement command, stop it from registering, and replace it with a dash to the targeted location. And since dash abilities are already able to bypass terrain, True Flight essentially made it so Aoshin was always dashing, therefore able to ignore the terrain entirely and allow the ability to function properly in terms of actual coding. Now before the implementation of True Flight on Kane's kit, Swiggity Swoody was simply a movement speed buff that resulted in bonus damage on his next attack, but Daniel was having difficulty finding a good second form for the spell, since it needed both a Darken and Assassin variant. Eventually he realized that the Assassin form could use True Flight as an active ability with a time limit, generating the necessary balancing levers to make sure that it didn't get out of hand, and it actually ended up being so fun and exciting to play with that it was turned into to the standard E effect, with a bonus when you choose the Assassin transformation. Thus Kane's Swiggity Swooty became Shadow Step, and Aoshin's True Flight became a legitimate part of the game. Another ability that never made its way into the release kit was this kind of an astral projection. Daniel Klein explained that Kane could leave his real body behind, sending out a projection of his astral form that would fight for him. And even if you killed that astral form, Kane would just snap back into his original body and carry on. But if the enemies found your original body, they could kill you and of course take down the astral form with you. It's actually a pretty crazy sounding ability and apparently was recycled from a very early iteration of Echo's kit. Daniel mentioned that there is the potential for the ability to return one day if maybe Riot finds the perfect fit for it. So even if it didn't make it onto Kane's kit, it might still find its way into the game eventually. But with all that said, Riot was eventually able to finalize his gameplay and release Kane. Hope you guys enjoyed this inside look into the development of League of Legends' newest champion and finding out what Kane could have been. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely hit that like button. If you didn't enjoy the video, feel free to hit that dislike button too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.